Hello and welcome. In this video I will show a way how you can export antenna data from Ekahau and represent it in Excel as a chart. You can see an example here on my screen. The data from the left side I exported from Ekahau, so you have the degrees and the gain of the antenna, and then I created this chart. On the right side you can see a screenshot from the data sheet from the PDF file where you can compare it. I selected this one because it has a quite special pattern. You can directly see that they match. How I did that? So you can open your Ekaho folder. It's on your hard drive in Programs, Program Files, Ekaho, and then Ekaho Pro. And inside the conf folder, there's a zip file, the antennas zip, with all the antenna patterns. In my case, it's more than 2,700 patterns in there, and you have usually you have one pattern for 2.4 and one for 5. If the APs have a BLE radio, there's an additional pattern, or if the APs have multiple, for example, 5 GHz radios, there are separate patterns for that. In my example, I want to use the Cisco 9115 AP, so let's scroll down. Here we go. Here it is. So as stated, there's a 2.4 GHz JSON file, one for five, and another one for the Bluetooth. I, in this example, I will only use the five GHz file. I extracted that to my hard drive, and I will open it in OneNote, not in OneNote, in Notepad++. Let's load that. Okay, here we go. We have the Notepad++, and I move the 5 gigahertz JSON file in there. This is how it looks like. So at first we have the horizontal plane and then we have the angle in degrees. It starts with 0, 3, 6, 9, 12. It depends on the AP and vendor. Depending on the data which Ekaho received, they will make the pattern. For Cisco, for the majority of APs, it's in 3 degree, three degree steps. For other APs, it's often just in 5 degree steps, so 5, 10, 15 and so on. If we scroll down here until 357 degrees, we get the azimut data below that, and there we have the other plane of the antenna. In that, uh, yeah, in that form, the information is hard to read, at least for me. So that's why I came to the idea to export that and import it into Excel. The way I do it is to filter all the clutter, the data we don't need. I search for DBI in the document, so therefore I also recommend Notepad++ because it's quite easy with that. So I say DBI, find all in current document. And from here I copy and paste the matched lines. And I open a new uh, file here and paste it. And now I remove all the data I don't need. So the DBI and the line and so on, I don't need. So on my keyboard, I press the Control and Alt key at the same time and hold it. And then I can mark all the data I don't need. Until here, you have to take care that there's uh, the lines above 100 have one space more than the ones below. So remove it here. Same again, Control and Alt, do the same. And the same. So now we have all the data in three degree straps for boost planes here in that file as a clear text. Now in Excel, I prepared it. So we have one row with elevation plane, another one with horizontal, and we have the data in the three degree steps. So zero, three, six, nine. Two hours later. We marked it and just pull it down until we hit 357. Two hours later. 357, here we go. Then we go back to Notepad++. And as I told you, at first we have the horizontal plane. So let's copy and paste that data into the horizontal row. Horizontal. I have to do, in Europe, I have to do one further step because we don't use the point the same way as you use it in the United States. So we, we use that not as delimiter. So because I don't want that uh, yeah, Excel fucks up the data, I have to replace the point with the comma. So 
I search for point and replace all that with a comma. That step is optional, only if your Excel has the same settings as mine. So I copy that and paste it into the horizontal row. Then I go down and mark everything below the 357 degrees. Then I cut that, Control X, and paste it into the elevation row. Now we have the data here organized quite fast. And what we can do now, we can mark the data. Let's say we mark here the ele elevation data, all the data points. I scroll up again because I want to have the chart on top. And then I go to insert, charts, all charts, and radar. Then I confirm that. And then we have our first chart. Now we just have to adapt the data points. So I click here on the, on the symbol, select data, and we start on the left side. Edit. At first it will ask for the series name, that's elevation, that's the title, and the values are already pre-selected, so it's the entire row. Confirm. And on the right side you can see now it's one, two, three, five, but we don't have our 360 degrees, so because it's yeah, one, two, three, and not in three, three degree straps, so we change that, edit. And here I just mark the left row under 357. Confirm. And now it looks more realistic. It's not perfect yet because we need to adapt the scale. You can do that on chart elements, axis, and more options. And here we select the data. So the bounds are in that case minus 35 to plus 5. And the units in between are 5 degree. Here we go. I can copy that from, from my other examples. So this is from the, from the Cisco data sheet, from the PDF file. That's how it looks like. It's quite small, but you can see the scale here, plus five to minus 35. And we will do the same with the horizontal plane. So repeat that exercise. I select the data. You can hit shift and control on your keyboard plus the down arrow, then all the data is selected automatically. I scroll up again, that otherwise the chart is placed at the bottom and it's hard to move it up. So scroll up again, insert, charts, all charts and radar. And then we wait a second, here we go. It absolutely does not look like what we have on the right side. So we have to tune that. At first, we select the right data. On the left side, we start with the subject with the horizontal, data is correctly selected. And on the right side, we place one, two, three by our first row. Okay, and confirm. It still does not look like what we expect. Yeah, we adapt the axis. and do the same, minus 35, plus 5, and 5 dB units. Here we go. This is how you can compare your patterns if they match what, what you desire. We had in the past an issue with an access point where the pattern was definitely wrong, and that is an easy way to prove that. But it's not quite easy, it's not straightforward, because different vendors use different patterns, they are in different quality, Sometimes it's combined patterns, composite patterns, so it's it's not straightforward. I had the feeling that, yeah, also Ikaho confirmed, it's not really possible to uh, compare different vendor antennas here, yeah, because they optimized it in different ways. But I did that exercise for, for some APs, and yeah, if you have time, if you're interested in that, you can do the same. And if you notice some issues, post it in the comments, or let's discuss that. And yeah, that's that's all for that video. But I also want to use the chance to uh, recommend one blog post from, I hope I correctly pronounced the name, if not, sorry, 
Bas van Oyen, he made a good blog post, which I will link below the video. He explained how you can create your own antenna in Ekehau. So it uses the same JSON files with the three or five degree differences. And he also made a good job in explaining what the code means inside the JSON files and so on. So I will link that below. Thanks for watching. If you're inter interested in future Wi-Fi videos, please hit the subscribe button and have a nice day. Bye.